When the ancient Greeks dubbed Italy Onatria, or the land of wine, they surely had a glint of Tuscan sun in their eyes. To delve into the history of Tuscany without paying homage to its vino is akin to admiring the Mona Lisa without her enigmatic smile. But, as with any great vintage, the story of Tuscany is layered, nuanced, and peppered with unexpected twists. Our journey begins with the mysterious Etruscans, the OG Tuscans, who laid the region's cultural and vinicultural foundation. They weren't merely cultivating grapes, they were nurturing a legacy that would flow through the annals of time. Little did they know that these modest vines would play pivotal roles in the political and socio-economic tapestry of the region. Enter the Romans. As they expanded their empire, they recognised the gold, or should we say ruby, that lay in Tuscan terrains. Vineyards sprawled, trade routes buzzed, and Tuscany's wine began to fill goblets far beyond its rolling kills. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages that Tuscany's fate truly began to ferment. The region became a geopolitical hotbed with cities like Florence, Siena and Pisa vying for dominance. Ah, the medieval soap opera of Tuscany, filled with political intrigue, power plays and of course, wine. Florence, with its booming wool trade and banking prowess, emerged as a powerhouse and at the helm, the Medici family. Their influence wasn't restricted to the arts, they also had a penchant for the finest Tuscan wines. By endorsing and promoting these wines, the Medici inadvertently stamped Tuscany's ticket to global fame. Wine's socio-economic influence is undebatable. As the region's reputation grew, so did its wealth. The flourishing wine trade funded architectural wonders, turning cities into art canvases. The very wealth that derived from wine trade led to the Renaissance, a period that painted Tuscany with an irrevocable brush of glory. But let's not romanticise too much. Tuscany's history was punctuated with battles and sieges, the bitter rivalry between Florence and Siena culminated in the Battle of Monteperti in 1260, a devastating defeat for Florence. Vineyards, unfortunately, bore the brunt of these tussles, yet, like a resilient vine bouncing back after a harsh winter, Tuscany always recovered, its wines richer for its trials. The 18th and 19th centuries witnessed a renaissance of a different kind, a viticultural one. Tuscany's wines, especially Chianti, underwent transformations in production methods, propelling them into international stardom. The socio-economic repercussions? A boom in wine tourism, turning Tuscany into a must-visit bucket list destination. The 20th century posed challenges, two world wars and the phylloxera epidemic threatened to decimate Tuscany's wine legacy, but echoing its past resilience, the regions rebounded. Innovative winemakers introduced the Super Tuscan wines, blends that defiled traditional norms but captivated palates worldwide. Today, wine isn't merely Tuscany's export, it's its ambassador. Names like Brunello di Montalcino and Vernaccio di San Gignano don't just roll off the tongue, they invite you into a narrative steeped in history, politics and passion. Tuscany, a land where nature whispers secrets to vines, and where terroir isn't just a term, but the soul of the wine. Tuscan terroir has a varied soil composition that is dominated by Galestro, a stesius clay, and Albaris, a limestone rich rock, both of which are especially prevalent in the revered wine areas of Chianti and Montalcino. These well-draining soils stress the vines, compelling them to burrow deep, resulting in grapes with concentrated flavours. Additionally, the region's mild maritime climate, influenced by the Tyrrhenian Sea, ensures a longer ripening season. This interplay between soil and climate imparts the wines with their distinct mineral undertones and robust character, echoing the essence of Tuscany. Let's explore some well-known Tuscan vineyards. First, the legendary Antinori, a name that's been synonymous with Tuscan wine for over 600 years. Their innovation, coupled with a reverence for tradition, put Super Tuscans on the world map. A bold move that reshaped global perceptions of Italian wines. Next, Castello Banfi. Nestled in the Brunello region, this vineyard rejuvenated San Giovese. Their meticulous clone research elevated Brunello di Montalcino into an international sensation. True visionaries of viniculture. And then there's Sassicaia, the jewel of Tenuta Sanguido. Their Bordeaux-style wines redefined excellence, proving that Tuscan terroir could rival France's best. A sip of Sassicaia is a dance with history. Tuscany's terroir doesn't just nurture grapes, it crafts legends. Each vineyard a chapter of excellence. While Tuscany's wines are divine, its tales stretch beyond the vine. To truly taste Tuscany, you must walk its stories and breathe its air. Let's explore some sites that are a must-see for every visitor to Tuscany. Let's start with the iconic, Pisa's Leaning Tower. 
More than just a photo op of folk support, it's a marvel of medieval engineering. Standing tall since the 12th century, it's in Pisa, and yes, it's still leaning. Florence, or Firenze, Tuscany's heart. Beyond its art galleries lies the Ponte Vecchio, a bridge draped in history and draped in gold. Jewelers have sparkled here since the 16th century. Window shopping, oh, it's an art form here. Now, for a Tuscan secret, the Saturnia Hot Springs, tucked away in Maremma, these thermal waters promise relaxation that even a spa would envy, Mother Nature's own jacuzzi. Venture into the sacred forest of Barmazzo, a renaissance garden sprinkled with fantastical sculptures, giants, dragons, and tilted houses, it's Alice's Wonderland with an Italian twist. Located in the northern Lazio region, kissing Tuscany's borders. Finally, drift through Val d'Orcia, a UNESCO treasure. Not for the gold or diamonds, but for its jaw-dropping vistas. Rolling hills, ancient farmhouses, and that oh-so-Tuscan sky. For those with wonderlust hearts, but perhaps not the wallet for an international jet setting, this tasting is a ticket to Tuscany. With every sip, hear the chatter from a Florentine market, feel the cobbled streets of Siena underfoot, and savour the passion of Italian artisans. While we can't teleport to its undiluting hills or meander through its medieval streets, we can certainly let our taste buds embark on an Italian escapade. So, dust off that corkscrew and set the table, because we're taking a Venice Voyage. First, Chianti Classico, a deep ruby red, this wine carries the soul of Tuscany, enticing aromas of red cherries, plums and a wisp of leather. On the palate, it's a harmonious blend of juiciness and tannic depth. Perfect with a classic tomato bruschetta or a healthy plate of spaghetti al pomodoro. Tuscany isn't just about reds though. Vinaccia di San Gimignano is a white wine as refreshing as a Tuscan breeze. Crisp and dry with hints of green apple, citrus and a delightful almond finish. A match made in heaven with a zesty lemon and a herb grilled chicken. Rosso di Montepulciano is the younger vivacious sibling of Vino Nobile. Fragrant with notes of violets and red berries, there is also a tantalizing touch of spices. This wine complements a charcuterie board, especially with aged pecorino and finocchiona salami. Morlino di Scansano is from Tuscany's coastal region. It's Sangiovese with a sea-kissed twist. This wine is bursting with blackberries, cherries, and an underlying earthiness. It is especially ideal with a roasted lamb or a rosemary-infused grilled steak. Remember, while geography confines us, flavours liberate. To Tuscany, in spirit, if not in person. Until next time, keep your spirits high and your wine glasses higher. Chin chin!